Hey there, so in this video we're going to look at the choice of base that would be appropriate to generate an enolate. So usually the best kind of base to use is a non-nucleophilic base that's strong enough to drive the equilibrium to the products. So a very common example is lithium diisopropyl amide. Because that nitrogen atom is so hindered, it's non-nucleophilic. So we won't be concerned with it reacting as a nucleophile in the carbon, at the carbonyl carbon. Instead, we expect it to consistently deprotonate at that alpha position. And we can compare the pKa values just to double check that that equilibrium will in fact drive over to the product side. So the pKa of that alpha proton is going to be about 20. And the pKa of the protonated amide, or the amine, is going to be about 38 or 40. So seeing that pKa difference and seeing that the weaker acid is on the right-hand side, we know that equilibrium is going to drive over to the product side. So that's where we get the idea that this is usually you know, a very consistent, very um, predictable, and reliable way to generate an enolate, strong non-nucleophilic base. Now in some situations, uh, a reversibly nucleophilic base can work. And so an example there might be uh, sodium hydroxide, and we do expect that sodium hydroxide to react as a nucleophile. And in doing so to create a tetrahedral intermediate. But like other tetrahedral intermediates that are formed that bear a leaving group, we expect that step to be reversible. And so that tetrahedral intermediate can form, but we'll just collapse and expel the leaving group and return back to the starting material form. So that equilibrium will be happening in the background of any of these reactions. But the other reaction that will be happening is that deprotonation step. Now if we look again at the differences in pKa values, we have a pKa of the starting alpha of, uh, protons, again at about 20, pKa of water of around 16. And so now notice that the equilibrium, while well, there's an equilibrium set up, it actually favors the starting materials in this, in this case. So this is a kind of situation that will, that kind of base that can work. Some of the, certainly some of the will be, will be generated, but it's only going to work in situations where there's an electrophile that's already present um, and that's already re reactive enough. And so it might be a situation where in fact, um, the electrophile is already on the molecule. And so as soon as that enolate is formed, uh, we can have a reaction with an electrophilic source right on the molecule itself, or maybe there's an, a, a pretty reactive electrophile uh, in solution ready to react irreversibly so that this equilibrium is pushed over to the right-hand side. Okay, so re reversibly nucleophilic base that's strong enough to generate something close to a 50-50 equilibrium can work in some situations. Now, one of the bases that reliably fails uh, would be something that is strongly nucleophilic and irreversibly so. So a Grignard reagent is a pretty classic uh, example of that. You can think of it in the polar, as a polar covalent bond, probably the best way to think about it there. We can redraw it at its ions to reveal that nucleophilic carbon atom a bit more clearly. Now these pieces are so strongly nucleophilic that they'll react at the carbonyl carbon instead of deprotonating. And the big issue here is that they're going to do that irreversibly. There's no leaving group that's present on this product molecule. These strong carbon-carbon bonds have formed, different than what we saw in that middle situation where there was a good enough leaving group present on that tetrahedral intermediate. So in this case, we'd get an addition, a nucleophilic addition, um, irreversibly, and so no potential for a deprotonation to occur. 
at that alpha carbon. Okay, so these irreversibly nucleophilic bases are not good choices for generating an enolate. So just to review, best choice or most reliable choice is going to be a strong and non-nucleophilic base. And we want a base that's strong enough to drive that equilibrium over to the product side. Note the big pKa difference between the two acids. In some situations, a reversibly nucleophilic base can be used. That nucleophilic reaction is reversible. Enough of the, uh, the conjugate base is generated that we can get, uh, as long as there's an electrophile present, we can get a reaction in the forward direction. We want to be careful not to use any irreversibly nucleophilic bases like graveyard reagents because they just react to the carbonyl carbon instead of generating the enolate.